This is News Center 5. Coverage you can count on. Now at 5.30, the murder of a Raynham baby is the latest in an alarming series of recent crimes against children. The U.S. Senate finally gets its say on the American military mission in Bosnia. From Main Street to Wall Street, the proposed merger between Bay Banks and Bank of Boston creates an atmosphere of uncertainty. And safety on the ice. Officials take steps to reduce the risk of an accident waiting to happen. Good evening. New developments tonight in the death of a Raynham baby, the latest in a string of troubling child abuse cases here in Massachusetts. A 22-year-old Raynham man is being held without bail for murdering his girlfriend's 14-month-old son. Eric Peters was arraigned today on a charge of murdering Justin Bento. He pled not guilty. The infant died Monday, apparently having been beaten to death. The boy's mother, Melanie Prado, has not been charged. The state says the root of the problem is parents who shouldn't be parents, adults who simply aren't ready for the responsibility. New Center 5's Amalia Beretta reports on what is a growing number of kids in danger. I was the only thing. Jose Sintron said today the mother of his dead two-year-old son, Akim, is at least an accessory to his murder. I want justice. I want, I want her doing the same thing he's doing. He's in jail. She should be in jail. Sintron is upset the 20-year-old Gloria Peña, pictured here in the middle, has not been arrested. Her boyfriend, 24-year-old David Alisea, has already been charged with smothering the boy and feeding him rat poison. The couple buried another nine-month-old boy in October, but an autopsy has failed to determine his cause of death. While she did not act in the best interest of the children, probably uh, during the course of their lives all the time, uh, there is no evidence, however, she contributed to, to the homicide, and the delay in the revelation is not a crime. Officials point out Sintron wasn't a model parent either. They say he didn't contribute to Akin's support, and Sintron admits he hadn't seen the boy for one year prior to his death. In Raynham, the alleged beating death of 14-month-old Justin Bento triggers more troubling questions about negligent parents. The mother's boyfriend has been charged with his death, which officials say followed a night of drinking with the baby's mother. And Mashpee baby Haley Foster Lamb was found safe and sound a day after police say her mother went on a drinking binge with the alleged kidnapper, a woman she had just met. I think there's a disturbing breakdown, I think, uh, across the board with families, with parents. Uh, the amount of child abuse has been going up at staggering rates. DSS reports that in 1994, 97,000 children were reported to the agency for abuse and neglect up significantly from 1990 when DSS investigated 83,000 such cases. And I think it's a real problem because we have a lot of disturbed people out there, a lot of people who are very, very frustrated with a lot of family breakdown, the economy, all the things, the homelessness that I think is going to make this problem escalate. And it says something, too, about the kind of value we place on children. Both Dr. Poussaint and D.A. Kevin Burke say they disagree with the regional director of the U.S. Department of Human Services, who says one answer may be to have DSS taken over by the courts. Poussaint and Burke say the courts are already overburdened and they are not a social service agency. They already have a mountain of problems trying to handle the explosive issue of restraining orders and domestic abuse among adults. Plenty of stories on that line, too. Well, of course, the one recommendation that people are quick to make is we need more social workers for the oversight of the children that are in care. But does anyone have the appetite for the kind of expense that that would involve. This is not a cheap, going to be a cheap fix. And uh, Dr. Poussaint especially says that people need to understand that, that this is going to take money to develop programs to teach people how to be responsible, good parents, responsible adults. And uh, we also, he says, need to give more than just lip service to making children number one on our priority list, all of us in society. All right, Amaya. Thank you. Thanks, Amalia. In other news now, the White House is calling today's Senate vote on Bosnia a victory. Lawmakers refused to shut off funds to deploy troops overseas, but this is just the beginning of a slew of debates on the peacekeeping mission scheduled today on Capitol Hill. Deborah Wiener joins us now live from Washington with the latest. Deborah. Heather, the Senate resolutions on Bosnia do not carry the force of law, but on this subject they carry the force of emotion and reluctance as 20,000 American troops from bases in the U.S. and Europe prepare for Bosnia. It was Nobel Peace Prize winner Elie Wiesel who made the final push for the president's Bosnia plan. What would future generations say about us, all of us here in this land, if we do nothing. 
In the past, Wiesel had urged the president to do more about Bosnia. Now Mr. Clinton is prepared to send 20,000 U.S. troops to enforce the peace there. We now can give that country a future back again, and I hope the Congress will vote to do it. And I believe America must lead the way in doing it. But there are still skeptics on Capitol Hill. I believe that we have to take the strongest stand possible. I believe that this is a mistake. Despite that feeling, the Senate rejected a measure that would have prohibited deployment unless Congress first approved funding the mission. That legislation had passed in the House. I do not believe we should limit the funds for food, supplies, and ammunition for our troops. It was wrong during Vietnam, and it's wrong now. Majority Leader Dole has crafted a resolution that offers conditional support to the mission. But that is not enough for other reluctant senators. They want to go on record saying they oppose the mission but support the troops. The Senate Minority Leader attacked that position. You can't have it both ways. You can't tell the troops we're with you but we're not with you. You can't send the troops on their way and then say, but we don't like what you're doing, we oppose what you're doing. That is wrong. A White House spokesman says the president will accept that kind of mixed message of support. Tonight, the president heads to Paris for the signing of the Bosnia Peace Treaty. Of course, that will trigger the official deployment of U.S. troops. This is Deborah Wiener live in Washington. Back to you, Heather. All right, thank you, Deborah. And tonight, a National Guard unit based in Manchester, New Hampshire, has learned it will be stationed in Germany for the peacekeeping mission. The 114th Public Affairs Unit expects to learn next week when it will be deployed. Investors got their first chance to react to last night's news of the Bank of Boston Baybanks merger, and the results were mixed. As expected, stock of Baybanks, the company being acquired, shot higher, but Bank of Boston stock was down on heavy trading. Money reporter Mark Mills has the latest reaction to the merger. At today's close on Wall Street, Baybank stock was up 7.5 at 92.5. But Bank of Boston shares were down one and five eighths on the day at 43 and three quarters on very heavy trading. Some analysts say Bank of Boston paid too high a price for Bay Banks, and some Bank of Boston shareholders may have been hoping they would be bought out and receive a windfall. Bank officials say they are more interested in building value over the long haul. And now you put our two institutions together, and in my view, uh, we can become one of the preeminent financial institutions in this country. Meanwhile, analysts are giving mostly high marks to the merger, which matches Bank of Boston's strong corporate and international business with Baybank's popular consumer franchise. Well, I think it's quite positive. I think these banks uh, complement each other in many dimensions. Uh, they wouldn't do it if there weren't going to be some savings. Uh, the negative is there'll be some, some jobs, but uh, in terms of the overall performance of the economy and in terms of consumers, I think it's a good thing. The merger involves 2,000 jobs being cut, and so there is uncertainty among workers at the banks, and uh, many customers wonder how the merger will affect them as well. And what lies ahead in the banking industry? We only have a few big banks here now. Fleet, uh, this merger, Citizens Financial, that's not many. It seems like it's really been shrinking, but in fact there are many, many banks. There's still a lot of competition, a lot of options for people. We're not reaching that point. I know instinctively we think, gee, all these mergers, we're having fewer choices. But in fact, there still are many choices and a lot of smaller banks who may benefit from this if the big boys turn their backs on the small customer. There's a lot of smaller community banks who are eager to take these folks on. In which branches close first? How will that be determined? Whichever uh, is the bigger building? Uh, when you have uh, one Bay Bank in, on one corner and one Bank of Boston on the yeah. other? That's a real estate issue. It's sort of the best facility. It'll it matter things like parking, convenience. Uh, which building may be newer, which can accommodate enough people. Uh, those kinds of issues will literally be the ones they'll look at the buildings and say, that's the good one, let's keep it, and the other one will turn into a donut shop or something. All right, yeah, <laughs> still a lot of work to be done on this. We'll have more on the major bank ber merger on News Center 5 at 6 o'clock. Mark will be back to look at how this deal might impact what it costs you to do your banking and how it will affect jobs in the New England banking industry. Next on News Center 5, a live report from the West Coast where they're cleaning up from a ferocious and deadly hurricane like storm. Skating on thin ice, it's not worth the risk, but there are alternatives for kids that are safe and just as much fun. And at six, rising from the ruins, the long process of rebuilding in Methuen. In 1996, 
Panasonic will help televise the Olympic Games in a way you've never seen before. And the new Panasonic Superflat System Television will let you experience them with startling detail, color intensity, and the power of the dome sound system. Superflat system technology is changing the face of television. Get your Superflat TV at Leechmere and get a $50 or $100 savings bond by mail. Kitchen Etc. The cooking and dining superstore is the source for your holiday entertaining and gift giving with savings up to 40% every day. Calvalon's 11-piece cookware set now only $349.99. With any Calvalon purchase of $150 or more, receive a bonus bake pan, a $63 value. Cuisinart makes it easy with their mini prep, only $29.99. And the five-piece professional S knife block set from Hankel's, only $149.99. Kitchen Etc. has full bridal registry services. Kitchen Etc. Everything you need to prepare and serve good food. Just because he got up at 5 a.m. to drive me to gymnastics. Just because he worked two jobs and still made the time to drive me to softball. And skating. And the movies. Just because he's my dad. I call him. I don't need any special reason to call. <laughs> He's already given me plenty. So long, twist ties. Now there's new Glad trash bags with quick tie flaps. So easy to close, so hassle-free, They've turned twist ties into trash. Try Glad trash bags with new quick tie flaps. Ties are out. Flaps are in. You're watching U Center 5 at 5.30. Coverage you can count on with Brian Leary, Heather Kahn, meteorologist Dick Albert, and Mike Lynch on sports. Now, U Center 5 continues. The FBI raided a house in Southern California today in connection with this fall's Amtrak derailment in Arizona. Agents raided a home near Los Angeles but didn't say what they were looking for or if arrests were imminent. The home is reportedly rented by a John Olin, but the Bureau won't say if Olin was there today. The Arizona derailment killed one person and hurt 78 when four Amtrak train cars plunged into a dry riverbed in October. Folks in the great Northwest might be wondering today just how great it really is to live there. A storm to rival all storms raced through the area with hurricane force winds and pelting rains. Trees were uprooted, cars and trucks turned upside down, and power cut to thousands. Brooke Stanford is live with the latest in the cleanup. He is on the scene in a community just north of Seattle. Brooke, good evening. Well, Brian, I doubt if you'd want to change places with Chuck Gordon back there, just behind the house, a house that happens to have sustained a fall from a tree that's about this big around last night. Chuck just stunned. He says, this is not my way of being on television, but he is, and uh, so are a lot of other people around here because we've had an awfully busy night, dark, rainy, cold, and especially windy. And for Chuck and thousands of people here in the Northwest, it's a night they will not soon forget. It was the worst storm to hit the Northwest in 15 years. Winds gusting to 90 miles an hour knocked down trees and power lines. At the height of the storm, more than 365,000 homes were without power, and work crews say it could be a few days before their work is really done. When this home on Mercer Island went dark, the owner tried to start up an emergency generator and instead started a fire. In the howling winds, firemen could do little more than keep the blaze from spreading. In Kirkland, a big fir tree crashed into Eric and Sherry Marr's kitchen. We heard the loud crack and just looked up at the ceiling and I didn't know what had caused it exactly until we went outside and saw the tree, of course. Dozens of schools and businesses are closed today as work crews put in overtime trying to clear down trees and restore power. The howling winds raised havoc with traffic too. The Evergreen Point Bridge across Lake Washington and the Hood Canal Bridge were both closed because the blowing water cut visibility to zero. On the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, these pedestrians had to hang on for dear life as gale force winds nearly blew them into Puget Sound. This morning, the first storm-related death was discovered near the town of Grapeview in Mason County. A woman was killed when a transformer blew up near her home last night. 
but considering the force of the winds, relief agencies say the injuries and loss of life could have been much worse. And people here feel they have dodged a bullet. And Heather and Brian, maybe it's a good sign. Just a few minutes ago, the sun came out here. We haven't seen that for some time. The lights are back on, the wind is calm, and people are just beginning to sweep up and pick up the pieces again. Mourning the loss of life now, but still feeling relatively fortunate that with so much wind and rain and so forth, that we came out of this relatively unscathed, except unless you talk to Chuck back here. Back to you folks in Boston. Mm. A little tough at the Gordon household tonight, I oh, think. Yeah, hopefully the sun will stay out there, though. Well, we've got some pretty stormy weather of our own moving in. DeGalbert's forecast is coming up next. And in tonight's sports timeout, another miracle on ice. We'll tell you about the comeback kid at Boston University. Mike Lynch will join us with all the sports. I see a lot of people that put up with scratch lenses. And a scratch lens means they're not seeing properly. And for me, that's a real problem. LensCrafters' new Dura Lens can help make that problem go away. This is steel wool on a typical scratch resistant lens. And this is a Dura Lens. No other plastic lens is more scratch resistant than a Dura Lens. Looks great. Only LensCrafters has them. And even these will be ready in about an hour. Dura Lenses help me help people see better. I feel really good about that. LensCrafters, helping people see better, one hour at a time. To me, Christmas means caring, sharing, trying to make everyone around you happy. When she came in, she says, come on, you girls, if you have some time, I've got something to give you. I made Christmas pins to say, hey, Merry Christmas, and thanks for being so nice all year. She just, boom, there's a nice pin. <laughs> and Hetty, she just hugged me. She said, how nice. We look forward to it. If we didn't get one this year, we'll be surprised. You can say, well, I'm going to Walmart to shop and to see some of my family. <laughs> Suzanne Rainey has a gift. If you weren't born with a gift, don't worry. You can still pick one up for the holidays. Start spreading the news. Like Sinatra 80th, live in concert. His first live album in over 20 years. Strangers in the night. So remember, if you don't have a gift, don't worry. Capitol Records has plenty of them. Hey, get going. For up-to-the-minute route-specific traffic conditions, punch star one free on your cell phone. Smart Traveler, that's commuter coverage you can count on. Five ounces of milk make every three-quarter ounce Kraft single taste better. How do they do that? See, they take the slice and make it into a rocket. Then they shoot it to the Milky Way. And when it gets back, it's busting with milk. More milk means better taste, and every three-quarter ounce Kraft Single is made from five ounces of milk, unlike imitation cheese made mostly with oil and water. It looks like the moon. Milk makes Kraft Singles taste better. K-R-A-F-T. Want me to tell it again? During the holidays, what you save is crucial, but so is what you serve. That's why Super Stop and Shop goes all out to help. From party foods and fruit baskets to special cuts of meat, you can count on us for quality you'll be proud to put on your table. Plus, we have holiday greenery, wrapping, and cards, so one stop here can save you time as well as money. And there are holiday savings throughout the store, so you get the best without paying more for it. Now that the holidays are here, isn't it time for you to stop and shop? Meteorologist Dick Albert and the Weather Center 5 forecast. Hard to believe that winter is still more than a week away. Right, the 22nd is mm. the official, official, official arrival. <laughs> Your mouth's already frozen, <laughs> just the thought of it. <laughs> oh, it's cold out there. Wow, where is this snow coming from? Let's look at Earth. Watch underneath the clouds in the Midwest as we... We're going to look underneath and we're going to see there's a lot of freezing rain and sleet from Minneapolis to Chicago to Detroit, north of Louisville, and we head up the East Coast where the clouds are going to be coming in fairly soon to the Boston area, but not until probably after midnight. Let's look at the latest temperatures. Certainly cold enough for snow as we'll look at Boston's 26, teens in Worcester and low 20s on the Cape and in uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Big high pressure, that's where all the cold air is, but there's a lot of snow snow and ice in the Midwest as I showed you on Earthwatch and it's all heading our way. Fortunately for the morning commute, most of it will not be here at that time. Here we had some snow, but that slipped to the south. Here's the major area right in here and that'll be here sometime I would say between 8.30 and noon tomorrow. 
So in the afternoon and evening is when the snow is going to be falling at a fairly steady clip here. So a real wintry mix tomorrow, mostly snow. It'll mix and turn to freezing rain and sleet along the Cape and the islands and south of Boston, even in the Boston area by maybe after 6 o'clock tomorrow night. As far as snow falls are concerned, in the northwestern portion of uh, oh, Worcester County, the Berkshires, uh, southern uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, it uh, looks like 3 to 6 inches. In the Boston area and the south shore, 2 to 4 inches. Along the south coast, in the Cape and the Islands, one to three, where it'll be mixed and then turn to a little sleet and rain before this storm ends. Incidentally, in the North Shore, Cape Ann, Rockport, Marblehead area, along the South Shore, could be a few spots to get a little heavier amounts because of that ocean effect snow. All right, if you're heading to school tomorrow, uh, looks like it'll be cloudy and flurries early, and then in the afternoon, there'll be some steady snow around, and expect that evening commute to be really slippery so be careful tomorrow afternoon and evening the forecast is for clear skies tonight but clouds moving in late 4 to 20 by morning and then tomorrow snowy skies developing some ice and rain mixed into the south and temperatures 22 to 34 tomorrow night snow ice and rain will be ending 20s and 30s and then thursday it looks to me like it'll be cloudy 32 to 38 more snow and ice and rain around new england thursday that's, uh, wait a minute, that'll be... Uh, that should be Friday. That should be Friday, that's Friday. right. Friday night no and uh, Saturday morning. Thanks, Mike, no charge for How that. How could you forget Friday? <laughs> all right, kind of a mess all around. Thanks, that's Dick. Right. And don't forget, if you have a link to the Internet, you can get updates from Weather Center 5 any time of day. Our web address for storm tracking is www.wcvb.com. Well, I've already introduced you. You know, the voice off camera here. I am the uh, the emergency weatherman. You do it all. Should Dick ever get stuck out in a snowstorm, I'm ready. I pay to, to see that. It. You've got a great story here. Yeah, this is, really, uh, this is really terrific. You know, this is the time of the year when people are coming up with all kinds of lists. Christmas lists. Lists of the best moments of 1995. Well, at the top of the list of great sports moments of 1995, scribble in the name J.P. McCursey, the Boston University goaltender who started last night against Dartmouth. Now, why was it such a special moment? Well, here's Mike Dowling to explain for you. Oh, the rebound. What a save by McCursey. The cheering stopped for J.P. McCursey on a July night in 1994, when, while riding a bike, he was hit by a car and almost lost his life. Even back then, I believed I could play. And, I mean, just keeping that belief, saying, you know, you got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to accomplish much. You just got to believe in yourself and know that you can do it. If you believe you can do it, I believe it, anything can happen. Anything can and did, because after a grueling year of extensive rehab, J.P. McCursey returned to the ice as a player earlier this season against rival Northeastern, with his team up 10-2. Peterson, tees it up, save McCursey, and he's got... But last night in Hanover, New Hampshire, McCursey was told that for the first time in 20 months, he would be the starting goalie for BU in their game against Darton. Every emotion possible, I think, happened, and then some you wouldn't even expect to happen, you know. So I can't really say which emotions, whatever, just... Just a great, incredible joy just went through my body. Just feeling of just being so happy being out there on the blue line. To hear my name called this on the national anthem just brought back a lot of memories. And despite experiencing the typical nerves of a goaltender, McCursey was up to the task, shutting out Dartmouth through the first and only period he played. Pat saved by McCursey. Did you call your family after last night's game? My mom gave me about six messages last night when I got home, so I was like, she was more happy than I was. <laughs> as emotional as last night was, and as emotional as that November 4th night when he first came back to play goalie for BU here in Walter Brown Arena, the most emotional night that he has experienced in his year and a half comeback was the night he helped raise that flag over a year ago. It, anything can happen. If you know yourself, you can do it. I mean, that's why I kept the faith, kept the belief for this last year and a half, and hey, it paid off. Mike Dowling, Sports Center 5. You know, in the summer of 94, when he was hit while riding his bicycle, he was in a coma for about a week. They didn't know if he was going to live. When he came to, they said, he's never going to walk again. And so you think about starting last night in goal. Incredible. you got to applaud his friends, too, who all rallied around him at the time. A number of fundraisers were held. Yeah, and his mom uh, and the BU staff, you know, always at his side, visiting the hospital and always encouraging him. A great story. Mm -hmm. Oh, it brings you to tears, really does. Thanks a lot, Mike. Right now for a look at what's coming up at 6 o'clock, let's go to Chet Curtis in the newsroom. Chet. All right, Heather, some new information tonight concerning last February's helicopter crash that killed four people. New Center 5 has obtained information that shows state police pilots were concerned about safety in the air wing for several years. But as Jorge Quiroga reports tonight at 6, their concerns and requests for additional training were ignored 
by state police brass. Our exclusive report coming up in just a few minutes at 6. Coming up next, a winter danger, deceivingly thin ice. And we'll have an update on a breaking story, a child who was just pulled from a frozen pond on the Cape. It's Caldor's best holiday one-day sale. For 18 hours, save 20 to over 70%. Thursday, 6 a.m. to midnight, save 25% off all Barbie and Fisher Price toys, board games, and bicycles. Take 45% off men's and women's knit tops and 50% off men's protein outerwear and fleece. Take 55% off pure cotton sheet sets. Then 70% plus an additional 10% off all gold and gemstone jewelry. Thursday only, 6 a.m. to midnight. Merry Christmas from Caldor. Pumpkin, it's time to wash your blankie. No. Blanky? No. Bologna sandwich. No. Okay. Who says the world has changed? This is good. You still love the taste of an Oscar Mayer bologna sandwich. You just forgot. Blanky. No. Quality beef and no fillers. Can you ever be too grown up for Oscar Mayer? Choosing the right new car can be difficult, but when you get the right information, you'll choose Toyota Corolla. According to the Complete Car Cost Guide, a nationally recognized authority, Corolla has been rated excellent for total cost of ownership. And of all the Corollas sold in the past 15 years, 75% are still on the road. And both Corolla and Corolla Wagon have been rated a best overall value. The decision really is easy when you have the right information. Simply the best. Kitchen Etc. The cooking and dining superstore is the source for your holiday entertaining and gift giving with savings up to 40% every day. Fine coffee is easy with Krebs Espresso Mini, a great gift idea at $49.99. Go from oven to table with Corning's French White, your choice, these covered casseroles or divided dish, only $9.99. And from Oneida, preparing is easy with this profile six-piece knife block set, now only $59.95. Kitchen Etc. has full bridal registry services. Kitchen Etc. Everything you need to prepare and serve good food. Joe Miller's a little excited because Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only, it's Circuit City's three-day sale. And Joe Miller's the guy with the sale tags. Save on home and car audio. Save on the best computers, too. Save on top brand appliances. And get no interest and no payments till 97 on select big screen TVs. And no interest for six months on all audio, video, DSS, and appliances. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only, get the biggest savings of the season on big screen TVs, camcorders, car stereos, and more. It's Circuit City's three-day sale. We have an update now on a breaking story we first reported to you at 5. A med flight helicopter has just arrived to rush a 9-year-old boy to Boston City Hospital. Russell Bickle was pulled out of Flax Pond by the Dennis Fire Department. The boy had reportedly been in the chilly waters for 20 minutes. Those frozen waters are, of course, extremely hazardous at this time of year. And tomorrow, the MDC will announce the location of several ponds where it will regularly check the ice for thickness and provide supervision. New Center 5's Peter Henderson reports that despite the bitter cold weather, safety experts are still very worried about the risks in most locations. A broken patch of ice, a rescue, and some hope for recovery. It is one of the grim rituals of winter, as each year, the temptation to try the ice is irresistible for kids. This week, parents in both Hyde Park and in Warwick, Rhode Island, are dealing with their kids being in critical medical condition after falling through thin ice. Today is Wednesday, December 13th. The skating areas will not be checked until there has been a lengthy freeze. Please remember that snow ice is not strong. The commission recommends skating on six inches or more of black ice. In Needham, where skaters skate at their own risk, the ice is just not ready. So many children go out because they see that nice um, even surface, but there's still a lot, so much open water and there's moving water underneath and we really don't want to have any families in Needham go through what that family in Hyde Park has to deal with now. In Norwood, there was great skating today and good safety. Froggy Pond is not really a pond at all. It's just a shallow patch that the fire department floods for skating. Marianne Ladder brings her kids here because safety on ponds is so difficult to determine. It is very tough to know, and I think that towns, if they want to encourage it, they should have a safe place for the kids to go. If pond ice looks inviting right now, and believe me, it does, nevertheless, the word to the wise is stay off. 
But if it should stay cold, you may be able to strap on your skates pretty soon and safely step out onto all that glass. Peter Henderson, New Center 5. It's a great idea to flood an area, though, like that to make it safe. Yeah, it's always important to try to find out where your kids are going to try to go skating and test it out first. The temptation is incredible. Mm. Mm. All, right. All right, there's a lot more news still ahead. Natalie Jacobson and Chet Curtis are next with New Center 5 at 6.